Hey YouTube, I'm gonna go through some of the crash detect stuff here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna get the camera, I'm gonna get the drone up in the air. I'm gonna move to the back side of the camera and I'm gonna fly at this camera as hard as I can so you can see what that drone looks like when it stops. I've done this a few different times and it's further away and I'll show you those clips, but I really want you to see some of the technology in this camera or this uh, drone, how it holds the camera straight and uh, how you can count on this thing to not crash. You know, I, I let my kids fly this thing. I let neighbors fly it. I take it to um, family get togethers and everybody gets to take a chance with it. I really have that much confidence that it's it, it's really hard to screw this thing up. And I, I wanna show that to you guys because it's nerve wracking buying a, an expensive piece of equipment like this and, and thinking, oh man, I'm just gonna crash that thing. It ain't worth the money. It's really simple to use and I, I don't want you to think it at all that this was it's some complicated process um, again I'm gonna I'm gonna take it up and show you some of these features and, and just so you guys have an idea so you know what you're looking at at home before you make your purchase at it. See with the controller on the ground, this is how cool this thing is. I mean, I'm setting off the alarms on it, but if you don't have confidence flying something like that, I mean, I don't have to balance it. Obviously, I don't have to do much of anything. I can just set it and let it run like this and kind of go about my business. You don't need to, but I just want to show you how cool this thing is, how it does all of its own stuff. It's got crash detect. It's really great. Um, couldn't recommend it more to you guys. Uh, it's a lot of fun to use. It has a lot of cool things that you can utilize. Okay, I'm going to open up the app and show you how to review a flight. Select this option in the top corner, flight records. And now to the right here, these are all your old flights and they all store no matter what. There's pictures that are associated with the flight, it gives you the location of the flight, the duration of the flight, how far you flew. And then you go back, you can use the picture as an indicator of what you were looking for in that. This one's a small flight from one of the ones I was I did for the demonstration here for you guys. So I'm gonna X out, go back and pick the longer duration flight. Right there, the 16 minute. And this one has the longer flight path. You can see the path is that right there, that light blue line. I'm gonna zoom in, take a closer look at it. Um, if you notice down in that bottom bar where this play button is right here, there's GPS coordinates. So as that thing's flying, if you pause it or um, record those, that'll take you right back to where the plane is. Now while you're flying the drone, you can switch to just this view. You don't have to have the, the camera view. You can switch to this view um, after you've identified something and you let the controls go and it's just pointing down. You can check your GPS coordinates and, and get a better look at it and feel from it from this view. I'm going to fast forward through this flight path. If you tap the screen, it'll clear away all the indicators. Tap it again to come back, hit X. And like I said, you can use the pictures here to indicate what that flight was and what you wanted to remember from it. And that's that, guys. All right, now I want to go over the equipment that I was using in the videos. Um, 
I'm going to show you the pack I use. I'm going to take this thing out, put it all together, show you how simple that is, explain it to you. Everything that I have here is going to be linked below so you can buy the exact same stuff. I also went and found another option, which is the Mavic Pro. This is the Mavic Pro Zoom or the Mavic 2 Zoom. And I, I went to the Zoom model because I wanted to have the feature without having to move the drone to be able to look closer at what I was working on. Um, it's not necessary. The other one that I attached is a, a more affordable option with all the same goodies. I, I, I've used it before, it's a, a good model. Um, I also included down in the description the Mavic um, 2 Air or Mavic Air 2, which is a really miniature version of this, a lot cheaper. It doesn't have the crash detect features, so I'll caution you if you're going to use that, be careful with it, but it has a great camera on it. It'll give you all the same abilities. And then I also included one that while I was searching for this, I found which thought was really cool and I, I probably will buy one at some point, but uh, not too soon. I, and, I, and when I do, I'll do a review on it, but Mavic actually offers another drone that has a thermal camera on it, which I'm really excited about. I always thought that would be cool to have, a little pricey. It's in the six, $7,000 range. So it has all these crash detect features. It works the same way as this one. Um, just has a lot more advanced options on it. So it's really cool. That's also in the description. I'll, I'll, I'll explain all that to you. Another thing that I did real quick um, before I did this portion of the video for you guys is I went back in and reviewed the FFA, or not FFA, the FAA regulations on drones. Because when I first did this, it, it, it's changed actually. I, I was gonna do the video. I'm glad I did the follow-up and checked on this because some things have changed. One of the things that changed is I used to be able to put my number inside the battery housing. I've now found that that's, they've changed that regulation. It has to be on the outside of the drone. Um, another thing was it, your drone could be um, under three pounds. Well, now it's under a half a pound. And anything over a half a pound and under 55 pounds, you have to register with the FAA. And you have to take this quick thing and I'll give you all the links below, but you got to take this quick test and then it gives you your FAA number to put on your drone and then you're qualified to use it for recreational purposes. I also took the 107 class, which it says on there takes about two hours for the training and about a 90 minute uh, time period to take the test. Um, I went through it all, passed it, got qualified for it. I'll say both of them are, are fairly easy. The 107 is a little more complicated. Um, the, the recreational one that you'll need is super simple and it, it literally, you, you take the test until you pass. So it, it's not intimidating by any means. It, it teaches you the different things it needs to teach you. So I don't want to waste too much time explaining that, but I did want to let you guys know that, that I went in, checked all the latest information and I will be linking, uh, below what you need to do. And, and when you get on those websites, it'll, it'll give you some more information about the stuff I'm talking about right now but it'll definitely get you right on track with what you need if you're gonna go down the road of buying one of these. So, like I said, a few things changed. Pretty much any drone you buy now, whether you're using it recreational or not, you have to go through this process to get this certificate. You gotta keep the certificate with you. I'll say, I will say, um, with the recreational one, that's easy to get. There's no deadline once you have it, you have it. The, um, the 107 requires you to do a refresher every 24 months. That's more of the commercial use. It's a lot more in depth on safety and all the different regulations um, surrounding it. So again, make sure you're really familiar with, with the laws pertaining to that. If you take the test, it's hard not to be familiar with them. So um, I'm gonna jump into this. This is it, guys, this is all I use. That's all that I have to throw that in my truck. And inside of this, as I start to unpack it, you'll see it's pretty sweet. Um, inside of here, I have a bag full of extra memory cards. And if you look here, everything fits right inside there. I have my iPad mini here. Here's the controller. To open up the controller, you just pull these bottom parts out, take out your joysticks, then screw on. They store in the bottom, obviously, so you don't break them off. Then you set your antennas. And then to turn it on, you simply just press it twice and hold it the second time. And now you're on. 
And the next thing I do This is the bracket that goes into the cell phone slot. It goes into the cell phone slot that allows you to lock this thing in. And uh, lock you in and put your iPad in here so that you can hold this. If you noticed, I had a lanyard holding this thing up for me. It all collapses down nice, fits in this bag. And once I get this all together, I'll show you. I'll show you how this pops right into the remote. It's a really cool feature. Take your remote, hold it from the back, hold this up into position, and you close these down on here the same way you'd close that down on your cell phone, and then it's in there. It's locked in place. The cool part with this lanyard is once you put this lanyard on, you're actually holding the holder, you're actually holding the holder that's holding the iPad so you don't run into the weight issue. Take your iPad, just loads right in like that. Now you got to use your lightning cable that you use for your iPad accessories, or your Apple accessories, I'm sorry. That just plugs into your iPad and then plugs into here. You can use your cell phone. I prefer the iPad mini, quite honestly, a, a regular sized iPad would be great for the type of stuff that uh, I'm doing. <clears throat> Here's what I mentioned a second ago. You had, in the past, you were allowed to put your, your number inside the battery housing, but that's changed. It's a new regulation. Now it has to be on the outside of the drone. And I, I read carefully, you know, I wanted to see if it had to be visible from the sides. It, it doesn't say that. It just has to be visible from the outside on a preliminary inspection. So it could be taped right to the top. Um, I plan on putting the, mine on the top and I'm going to cover it with a little piece of packing tape so I don't have to deal with the weather. Um, when I'm opening this drone, I always leave the gimbal protector on until it's completely open. And you just swing these open. These ones swing down. And then you have your drone is ready to fly minus the battery. To take this out, take this off, you just lift up on that and slide it out. And now your drone is ready to go once you clip in the battery. And the battery is super simple to put in. That's it. In the bottom here, you have your port for your SD card. All this stuff on the bottom, these are these are crash detect sensors. These aren't your cameras that are that you're viewing what you're uh, recording with. This is your record camera. These are all crash detection sensors. Also in this case, I fit an extra battery. I have my Mavic charger. Then I also have an Apple charger that I keep in there. If you notice is these Velcro, you can configure this in any way you want for what works for you. I put my controller here. I put my um, iPad holder here. Obviously drone, battery, battery. And that's it. That's all there is to it, guys. Everything I've done in those videos takes me a couple minutes to set up. Um, hopefully this video has helped to you. Um, hopefully it, it'll uh, give you some insight into a cool new technology and maybe help you guys utilize it. If you have any questions or comments, please throw them down below and I'll do my best to get to them as quickly as I can. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and have a good one, guys.